A new day, a new day to go shopping at Dollar Tree. And this time we are in search for their summertime solar lights. You can find these at Dollar Tree all the time. And they actually come in different shapes and sizes. I found all of these styles at Dollar Tree for $1.25 each. We're going to start with these two little pots. Now, I wish I would have had three, maybe a larger one. Because we are creating something that I've seen all over Pinterest. So this was a totally Pinterest inspired craft. And I'm going to start opening it the opening of the smaller one. I want to be able to fit one of the solar lights. So I marked it with a pencil and then very, very carefully, I keep chipping away until I make an opening that is large enough to fit the solar light. We're creating a little lighthouse. If you have not seen them, you can find them all over Pinterest, but I've never made one myself. Once I have the opening ready, I'm just going to hot glue both of them, the smaller one on top of the other one. I'm going to give everything one coat of Waverly chalk paint and the linen white, and then we're going to let that dry. Then we're going to paint the top portion of the solar light in this beautiful farmhouse red by Rustoleum chalk paint. And then we're going to do the two bottom trims for the other two little pots in the red as well. If you are returning, welcome back. And if this is your first time visiting, I want to say welcome. I hope you consider joining our YouTube family. So make sure you are subscribed. You hit that notification bell so that you do not miss any of my uploads. For this next step, you can totally do this by hand, but because I have my Cricut Joy right next to me, I'm gonna make a little window and a little door for our little lighthouse. So I'm just gonna weed these out. I did have to cut the little door just a little bit. I made it a little bit too long. And then we're gonna place the little window on the top one. We're going to put everything together now that it is dry. I'm just going to place a little bit of hot glue in the rim of the opening and then place the light right there. I think this one is so adorable. I love the way it turned out. I'm going to show you three pictures, this one, another one, and then the one, how it looks in the dark. For the next Dollar Tree DIY craft, we're going to start with these little wooden pieces you can find in the crafting section at Dollar Tree. These little pots are so cute and then these little wooden forms are so adorable, especially for now for summer. I'm going to paint the little leaf in this beautiful green. It's a paste that I already had on hand from A Maker Studio, but you can use paint if you have it. I'm going to take the little mushroom and paint the top of it red. Then the flower is going to be yellow and then the bottom of the mushroom is going to be white. We're going to take what it looks like like a mason jar, but this is actually a pasta sauce jar, and we're going to fill it up with some dirt. I keep dirt on hand so that I can fill my indoor plants with, and I'm just going to fill it maybe about one third of it up, or maybe a little bit more. Just fill it to whatever you desire. Once I had it in place, I'm going to place some little flowers inside the little flower pot. I'm just going to add hot glue, then add this yellow one and some green ones just to fill it in. And then we're just going to make a little greenhouse. So using my scissors to help me place them in, I'm just going to place them one by one where I see fit. And then we are going to bring in the solar light. This solar light is my personal favorite because it has the cutest little butterfly attached to it. Look how cute it is. We're going to remove the bottom and we're going to remove the actual cone as well. Then we're going to move the little portion so that we can light it up and it works just fine. I love it. All right, so we're going to add hot glue to the rim of the solar light and place it right on top of the mason jar. This one is totally one of my favorites. I love the little butterfly that came with the light. I think it adds so much character and I just think this one is just so gorgeous. Let me know what you think. For the next Dollar Tree DIY craft, we're going to take this leftover Christmas sign. We're going to remove the jute string very carefully because we are going to reuse it. I'm going to sand down the glittery part as well as the surface that has all the design. We're going to paint this because this will be the back of our sign. We're also going to paint the opposite side and that's going to be our front. All 
All right, so now it is painted. Now I purposely left some of the edges in this distressed look. I didn't give it full coverage. That's because we're gonna sand it down now. I did make some lines with a pencil. They are gonna get muted and almost disappear, but it will be there very subtle. And then using my Cricut, I created this phrase. It's a phrase that I saw on Pinterest and it says, nothing can dim the light that shines within. I think it's so appropriate with the theme of today's video. So I'm just gonna place it on some transfer tape and then place the quote on the right side of the sign. I'm gonna scrape it on and then remove the transfer tape. Now the solar light we're using for this one is an adorable one. It has a very farmhouse look and we're gonna leave it entirely like this except the little stake from the bottom which would technically you would just put it like that and then be able to put it on the floor. However, this time we're just going to remove that part. We're just going to keep that top portion. Because that bottom portion kind of removes easily, I'm just going to add some hot glue and make sure that it's a bit more secure. So I'm just going to place it and then mark with a pencil where I need to drill a couple of holes. And then we are going to attach the solar light using some flexible wire. As always, my friends, I would love to connect with you on Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest. And I have those links down below in the description box. So if you want to check them out, it is there. I place some tape to cover the little pointy parts of the wire. Now I'm going to add some hot glue and some greenery and a cute little yellow flower to the bottom of the lantern i just felt like it was missing something and i think this really finished it off so nicely i'm going to replace that the jute string back on it but i'm going to place some max masking tape to the edge that way we can thread it nicely we're just going to make a very simple knot in the back and that's it for this one i gotta tell you this one is one of my favorites too they're all my favorites i don't know what i'm talking about <laughs> i love this one let me know what you think next at Dollar Tree DIY craft I'm gonna take this box that I thrifted a while back it was only 99 cents and I thought for the size and the sturdiness of it was a really good deal I also cut this one by three into about 10 inches long pieces one for each side because I want to create a nice farmhouse style handle for it I marked where I wanted to add some wood glue because I wanted to have a very secure hold and bond wood glue and brat nails is how I am going to attach it now the glue bot that you saw me applying the uh, wood glue is from Amazon and I do have it on my Amazon store along with all of my other favorite items from Amazon so it is down in the description box if you want to check it out when you are done watching. I'm going to add about five or six brand nails to each side that way it's going to be nice and secure. This large dial I did get at Walmart. They have all kinds of sizes. I'm just gonna place it where I think I want it and then mark and then cut with my miter saw. I am going to pre-drill a couple of holes, one in each end. This is so that we attach it to the handles. It's going to not crack on me. Then I'm just gonna dry fit it where I want it, kind of mark where I need to also pre-drill holes on the side panels. That way, again, the wood will not crack when I add the screws. I added a little dab of wood glue on the dial as well and I'm also going to pre-drill these screws just until they're overlapping on the other side very slightly. This is so that way we know exactly where to place the dial. Once it was there we're just going to place it right where we need to and then we're just going to tighten the screws and between the screw and the wood glue this has a really tight bond. All right, so then it's time to start painting. The paint that I'm gonna use is by Amy Howard at Home. And it's a beautiful, I think it's like a teal color, but in their title, they have it as a green. You let me know. It Does it look green to you? Or does it look more on the blue side? To me, it looks like a teal blue, <laughs> but let me know. I'm gonna give everything one coat, although two would be perfect for a full coverage. One coat is what I'm gonna give it because I don't need full coverage because I am going to distress this box pretty heavily. I'm 
going to cover the one side on the inside of the box that had the felt. I did try to remove it and it was not coming out. So I'm just going to cover it up with this nautical style fabric that I had on hand. And I'm just going to hot glue it in place, which is plenty sufficient. I am now going to add a stencil to the front. Now this is a clock stencil. I'm not going to use the clock portion, but I am going to use the center portion. And I'm going to stencil it using a Rust-Oleum chalk pen in the charcoal tone and a wedge makeup sponge. And then you just want to dab and then tap, tap, tap as needed until it's nicely stenciled. All right, so now we're going to distress everything. You can certainly skip this part. I know a lot of you are not a fan of the distress look, so you can leave it as full coverage as you want. But I do want this box to have that farmhouse distress look. So I'm just going to use my palm sander for a very heavy distress. I am then going to seal everything with a Rust-Oleum top coat. This is to make sure that it's all going to be sealed in, especially if it's going to be out in my porch or where elements are going to hit it. This is the solar light we are going to use for this one. Now, I think this is so adorable, but you do have to use it with a uh, screw. So the way I'm going to do is I'm going to place masking tape right over the holes. I'm going to mark with my screwdriver where I need to drill some holes, and we're going to place it right on the handle of the box. We're going to place it right centered and then we're going to drill a couple of holes not all the way through but about halfway through this is so that we know exactly where we need to screw in the screws and then that way is an easy place to place it on and look how cute this look this would be gorgeous with real flowers of course i put faux flowers for now but i think it'd be great and especially with the lighted portion of it i think it would be great in a yard or maybe even a porch and at night it would light up so nicely let me show you what it looks like in the dark it is hard to see because there's still a little bit of light shining, but I think it's so adorable. But let me know which one is your favorite. I would love to know down in the comments. And I have another video here for you to watch. Make sure you click on it. Have fun watching. I'll see you later and have a blessed day. Bye.